Welcome to the first installment of the Short Lectures on Critical Thinking series brought to you by East West Knowledge Group. Let's get started, shall we? What is thinking? Thinking is a process that our consciousness is constantly involved in. We obviously have a, a, a serious organ right here in our skull that facilitates this process. And for the most part, humanity is always involved with this process. However, philosophically speaking, uh, we know that most people don't bother thinking beyond the surface. Now, this is a generalization, of course, but there is plenty of evidence to support this generalization. You ever seen the bumper sticker that says, don't worry about what other people think because they don't. Well, when you look at the results of elections around the world, whether it's in the United States or Australia or Germany or uh, Saudi Arabia, if there is an election there, uh, the results are based on public opinion, which is predicated on a way of thinking that is borrowed thinking in some ways. And that goes against the principle of critical thinking. Borrowed thinking is thinking that majority of people in, in different societies decide to do early on as they become adults. Why? Because it's easy. Study after study shows that thinking, actually thinking, I mean penetrating through the surface, is difficult work. And if you live in a society that things are brought up for you, Things are automated. Uh, there are plenty of pundits in the media, particularly corporate media, that has uh, the sophistication of professionalism and, and uh, technology to give you easy to digest material. Then why bother thinking about it? They're the experts. They're doing the thinking, presumably. Uh, so people grab headlines off the newspapers, off the electronic uh, news media, and so on, and they make the assumption that just because the stuff, the headlines and, and the borrowed thinking resides in their consciousness, uh, it is theirs. And of course, sure enough, if you do it over and over and, and, and follow the procedure of borrowed thinking, eventually you're going to think that it is your own original idea. But critical thinking is different. Now, plenty of lip service is paid to critical thinking at the university level, at the corporate level, and we have an entity that, that pretends to be important and developmentally instrumental in, in propelling humanity towards evolution and getting better and enrichment and so on and so forth. But are they really doing a good job? A critical thinker would be skeptical of that. Now, what I want to do right now is go through a, a simple and yet, hopefully, profound uh, way of approaching what a critical thinker must do in order to reach the pathway towards thinking beyond the surface and going from first order to second order thinking. And then the aim being that at, while you're at the second order thinking, moving towards eventually getting to the third order thinking which is reserved for figures that are ahead of their time, such as Copernicus, and Galileo, uh, Ibn Sina, or uh, uh, Aristotle, or Confucius, or the original Buddha, Siddhartha, and so on. So what does a critical thinking uh, person must do? The critical thinking person must provide and demand the following. He or she must provide clarity with ideas, with thoughts, with arguments. He or she must demand clarity from the person that uh, he or she is in dialogue with and demand a dignified realm of conversation, a realm of exchange of ideas, and a dignified realm of projecting ideas and possibilities. A critical thinker looks beyond the surface at all times. Even if you are in the restaurant, 
say you're a critical thinker and you're looking at an item that you want to order and you want to have an excellent culinary experience amongst friends because after all what is the meaning of happiness but to be with good friends and, and eat good food and have an enjoyable time and an enrichment process taking place so you look at the item you look at the ingredients you think about the digestive process you think well is this chicken with this particular sauce and these ingredients that go along with it uh, good for my digestive system? Do I understand my digestive system? What do the doctors say? And do, does that make sense? And did I examine that? And, and so on and so forth. So uh, critical thinking is a habit. It's a habit that must be developed. And once it's developed, must be nurtured and maintained and then nurtured some more. And then you reach a level as a critical thinker then where you understand that the more you know, the less you know. And of course, you know, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, all these people that have built the system of thinking and, and process of critical thinking and, and uh, examination of things uh, have always known that. And in, in, in some ways they have transmitted that to us. We must think about it. So think about it. You're a critical thinker. A critical thinker is sometimes called a problem solver, a philosopher, a psychologist, a, a, a business manager, a teacher, a student, anybody who is confronted with a problem looks for ways to find solutions to that problem. Oftentimes, we, the original question of inquiry generates newer questions, and sometimes the solution is asking more questions. What is the meaning of life? Is there meaning to life? Is there absurdity that underlies everything? Is there absurdity to our existence? If so, why are we here? Is there a reason for us to be here? Well, we are here. We know that. But should we be or should we become? Do we take responsibility for our existence? Do we use the faculties that are available to us? Do we think? Do we examine things? Do we look for clarity? Do we ask and demand clarity? Do we take action for change? Reason be thinking, finding solutions, strategies, and newer questions to ask. And do we go beyond the first order? So let me quickly review. We are thinking about thinking. We demand clarity because we want to be critical thinkers. We demand a dignified realm of exchange of ideas, arguments, debates, and a collision of thoughts coming together. Because in order to enrich one, in order to, to enrich oneself, in order to move beyond the ordinary level of being and, and thinking at the ordinary level, uh, we must think collectively. And what I mean by collectively means that we must be in touch with humanity and we must embrace new ideas. A critical thinker, this is often said, is an open-minded person. So if you're an open-minded person, what does that mean? That means you're open to ideas, so long as they are predicated on reason, of course. Right? Critical thinking is solely a, a way of thinking that relies upon and is seriously anchored in use of reason things that make sense things that provide new meaning to ideas things that premises that build upon one another and create a conclusion and therefore a good strong argument and so on so these are some of the ideas that we're going to be thinking about and, and talking about the next installment will get down to the nitty-gritty and become a little more specific uh, about these sort of things. And so until then, I bid you farewell. Ciao.